great seat. <laughs> you doing all right? Thank you for coming. It's my pleasure, man. Uh, we're here with Paul Fitz, candidate for the city uh, of Raleigh. Well, candidate for mayor of the city of Raleigh. And thank you so much for being here with us today, Paul. I do appreciate your time. Uh, we're going to get straight to it, if that's all right with you. Um, uh, you and I spoke last week a little bit about um, uh, us wanting to speak with you and, and you talking about uh, your candidacy for mayor. Uh, in addition to uh, a little bit about the housing market. But before we even go there, there were obviously some events that took place in Charlottesville, Virginia this past weekend. And uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on that. What, what do you think about what has gone on up in Charlottesville, Virginia? I mean, just the, the tragedy of the incident. Um, first thing, I always look at logistics of every situation. Uh, number one, we have hate groups in the country. I don't like any of them. I don't care who they are. If they have hate, there's no place in this country for hate, period. Um, but I looked at the logistics of what had happened. I'd spoken to several uh, law enforcement agencies since then, and they agree with my assessment that those two groups should have never been allowed to even get near each other. Um, there should have been a better police presence. I don't know if there was a, a edict from the mayor of the city or who told you know, the police officers to stand down, but they did not act in an effective manner. Um, and, and the first things that we need to do is, I know that we're gonna have sides that disagree. I know we're gonna have people who will, who will not come together no matter what, they'll, they'll be uh, animus towards each other. There'll always be some type of animosity, but even when that happens, there should have never been an altercation between sides. Um, there should have been a better police presence at that time and, I, and again I don't know if, if the police were acting on orders or if they just didn't know what to do if they didn't really have a plan in place um, I, I can promise you if I'm mayor of Raleigh there won't be a hashtag pray for Raleigh uh, when I am mayor um, I, I understand that people say they have the right to free speech for whatever purpose it is but um, I do believe that uh, the, the police didn't do what they should have done in that situation. They should have gotten in instantly. They should have contained the situation. There should have never been any any bar, bodily harm. There shouldn't have been any loss of life in that situation. How do we, uh, if you're mayor, how, how do we uh, stop a situation like that from happening here in the city of Raleigh? We're obviously the capital of the state of North Carolina, the capital city, and you know, we're not immune to protest and, and people letting their voice be heard. Right. How do we stop such events from happening here, right in our own city? We have to, I mean, it, it comes with preparation though. Uh, I do believe that the police in that town in Charlottesville had enough time to prepare for the situation. Uh, I just, I feel like we, as a people, we all have First Amendment rights. If someone is denied a permit for a First Amendment right, then we're going to have to start denying everybody a First, First Amendment right permit. And I don't, think that's, I don't think that is a viable option. But I do believe that there will always be one group or another group who's going to have an anti-protest geared for whatever they do. And I still believe that there should be a proper, a proper authority presence. There should be police. There should be... And here in the city of Raleigh, you've got not just the Raleigh police, you've got the state capitol police. You have the Raleigh Sheriff's Department, and I believe that all of these local communities, as well as uh, Nightdale, Windale, Zebulon, Morrisville, Holly Springs, uh, Wake Forest, th our police forces have the ability to communicate with each other, and if we have to call from other cities, we can do that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't feel that whatever the possible threat that could happen in a situation cannot be contained properly to start mm -hmm. with. This uh, past Monday evening, uh, just our neighbors to the west, uh, Durham, uh, had uh, a situation where protesters, uh, protesters went to the old county courthouse uh, on Main Street and toppled one of the Confederate monuments. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is your response to that? Uh, it's still destruction of property. Uh, I, I, understand, I understand how people can be upset by anything that they find offensive. I, uh, I, it's funny we're talking about this because I had this conversation with somebody earlier today, and I'm, I'm older than you. 
<laughs> I'm an old guy, you know. I thought you were 37. Yeah, keep keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> I, but I remember a time in my life where um, there was an artist in New York, and his he he received funds from the National Endowment of Art, and his artwork was he 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 urinated in a jar, he put a, cry, a cross in it, and then put colored gels over it and took pictures of it. And the name of the artwork was called Piss Christ. That was the name of the artwork. And it offended a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people were offended by mm-hmm. this. Very upset, highly you know, agitated by it. But you know, people in the art community, people who support the art say, hey, you'll find art offensive sometimes. This is art, there's an expression, there's something here. Um, you're, you're just gonna have to let it offend you. It, it is what it is. But you take it back 30 years later to where we are right now, and there are things out there that people are going to find offensive. Uh, not just um, not just the statue that was taken down in Durham on Monday night, but there was a, a Holocaust uh, memorial in Boston that had been vandalized Monday night as well. Mm-hmm. And somebody could say, oh, it was just kids, just vandals. But it, it's still destruction of property. It's still you know, vandalizing. Um, if, if, an, if a statue like that is going to come down, you know, let the city vote on it. Let them take the proper measures. You can even be there to witness it when it happens. But some somebody could have got hurt the other night um, had it not been done properly. Uh, and I think there's always a a measure to what we need to do as citizens. Mm-hmm. Um, in a heated moment like that, though, it, it was basically destruction of property. And I think anybody who was involved in it, I think they should have been fined or arrested or whatever it was. That we we all have to we all have to answer for what we do. The Durham police uh, said that uh, there weren't any arrests made because it was it took place on county property, and so um, and and I would assume also the tweet that came out from Governor Roy Cooper uh, was was simply put, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, that uh, that it it could be viewed as offensive, but there's a better way to take down monuments. Uh, do you believe that? Um, Confederate monuments or monuments that seem to suggest uh, hatred or uh, racism towards certain groups should be removed from uh, some of our state properties? I, I think about it and I always wonder what happens in Pandora's box. Um, I can tell you though that uh, you know, Thomas Jefferson Washington, George Washington were both slave owners. So we can also ask should they have a monument, should there be a memorial, should there be a Mount Rushmore? Um, and I also use, and I, I know, I don't know if you've seen it before, uh, there's also a place in Georgia called Stone Mountain, Georgia, which there's Confederate soldiers on the side. It, it's, I hate to say it, it's beautifully done. Because <laughs> I've visited the site as a kid, I've seen it. I mean, it's beautifully done. But if we're gonna, if we're gonna start you know, tearing down anything, I wanna know what's our end game? How far are we gonna go? You know, what do we find offensive? I, I hate to say this, but I do a lot of research on almost everything. Um, uh, I've got a, a friend of mine who's a, a conservative pastor, and he said that you know Martin Luther King spoke out, spoke out against uh, uh, homosexual lifestyle. Uh, Nikolai Tesla, and I know why am I bringing up Nikolai Tesla? Well, uh, the city of Raleigh just paid for a, a, a statue of artwork on Sandy Forks Road. It's an homage to Nikolai Tesla. Nikola Tesla also believed in eugenics. I mean, Hitler believed in e- eugenics. So it, this, this could get deep. Um, and I, I still want to know if there's an end game in play versus reactionary uh, type measures. Mm-hmm. Um, can we go to Lee County, North Carolina? Lee County was named after General Lee, uh, Robert E. Lee. Uh, the city what we, we're in right now, Raleigh, North Carolina was found, you know, in name of Sir Walter Raleigh. Well, Sir Walter Raleigh also took uh, Native Americans back to England in bondage. You know, it's, it, do we take down Sir Walter Raleigh's statue? You know, I, I don't know. I, don't, I just don't know where the end game is. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, mark history, but at the same time, I hope we all learn from it. I, I, I don't want to be the guy who makes these kind of decisions on this. I would rather it be done with a group effort. I would rather it be done uh, uh, thoughtfully and uh, thoroughly. 
before anything is removed. And we have other things that could be renamed as such. It just, it just depends. I know that's a long answer. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> you, you are running to become mayor of one of the fastest growing cities yes, in America. Absolutely. Um, what is your message to voters? Um, y'all come. <laughs> uh, I want people to live here. I'm a mortgage lender. Uh, I've welcomed thousands of families uh, to North Carolina. I've helped them find a home. I've helped people save money on what they, what, uh, the places that they live. Uh, I've done it effectively. I've done it efficiently. I wasn't one of those BC lender guys who just tried to you know, turn a fast buck back in the early 2000s. Uh, I've worked with couples literally two years to get their credit right so they could be able to buy a house. Um, I think it's worth it to get people ready, credit worthy, uh, ready to buy a house because they're learning a responsibility while they're uh, fixing their credit. They're learning to budget their man money a little bit better. They're taking care of their responsibilities from past uh, credit issues. So moving forward to what I'd like people in Raleigh to know, you know the city of Raleigh is in $2 billion of debt. Uh, this is not a small debt for a city this size. Um, I, I gave an example the other day. I said, well, you know, if we're $2 billion in debt and we just built a, a $900 million football stadium, then that kind of makes sense. But we have accumulated this debt through a, a, a series, a long series of poor decisions made by the city council. And the majority of our debt was passed by the city council only. They weren't put on the bonds for the citizens to vote on they, I'm sorry, they weren't put on the ballot for citizens to vote on. The actual city council made the decision to, to put us in this debt. Uh, if you look at the, a pie chart of your household income, this debt is almost as much as um, public safety. Mm. So if you're looking at your monthly budget, public safety would be the same thing as uh, your mo monthly mortgage. So your mortgage is gonna be about 20% of your uh, your expenses. Well, right now our, our debt servicing is about 20 of our expenses as well. So when your mortgage is the same thing as your credit card debt, you're really, you're skating on thin ice. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, the city has to be better about its budgeting purposes. So so you want uh, voters to know that, number one, you want to be a better steward of the resources. Of their uh, funds. Of their funds. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I can do it. Um, Raleigh is also one of the hottest housing markets. Uh, uh, in the country yeah and it's obviously your house is very much in the real estate business and we and those of us who are in the real estate business are absolutely excited about um, how well the market is doing oh yeah uh, in especially addition, if you're a listing agent especially if you're a listing <laughs> agent but in addition to uh, you know the the rising the rise in, uh, in, in housing prices yeah. Uh, which sellers are very much excited about. Right. Now, there's two sides of the coin, however. Right. Um, what do you say to the buyers who are essentially uh, being shut out of the housing market now that the market has changed? And in addition to that, um, uh, the, the gentrification that's currently taking place in, in many of some of the neighborhoods uh, around here, uh, what do you say to those people? You know, uh, the gentrification issue is more uh, in line, or I say in line, but more of a product of what uh, was passed with the UDO uh, back in 2015. Um, there were a lot of families upset about how the UDO was passed, uh, how quickly it went through. Um, but uh, the people who were the architects of the UDO still got voted in for re-election. Um, so there were no ramifications behind it. Um, the, the two-part question is really this. How do we find a way to keep housing affordable in this area? Uh, it can be done, but it's a matter of where you look versus um, saying, well, we've got to find a way to, to fix prices. We've got to find a way to make it X, Y, and Z to put you know, square pegs in round holes. Um, we can use our land resources a little bit better. There are uh, several... Um, uh, commercial properties right now that are completely underutilized. Uh, you, if you go to um, oh, Crabtree Road and Capitol Boulevard, not too far from Raleigh Boulevard, there's a plaza there that is, truthfully as I say this, it's, it's fairly run down, but it's a, a sizable plaza. 
uh, a good developer could come into that area and they could build a lot of townhomes, uh, brownstone type or just you know townhomes in general, mm -hmm. that you could house a lot of people for a very reasonable price. I'm not a developer. I don't have that kind of money. You know, <laughs> I mean that's probably my other other opponents. You know, um, but being in the business and being a lender, I guess that gives me a, a, a better perspective on how you know real estate should be viewed. I could I could literally drive around the city and find area upon area upon area that I think is completely underutilized that a developer could come in and and do well with it and make good decisions and help people who are in that first time home buyer uh, spot find a home. Um, really though, the second part of your question, and it's, it's, it's difficult when it comes to, and I, I'm not you know, using a buzzword, but it's difficult when it comes to affordable housing. Um, I saw a couple of weeks ago that people wanted an MLS stadium to come to downtown Raleigh. Mm -hmm. Well, an MLS stadium, will seat 22,000 people and it'll probably be utilized 15 to 20 times a year max versus being able to put an apartment complex or a condo complex on that same spot or maybe even two complexes on that same spot that could have house thousands of people every day that would be making a better impact uh, economic impact on downtown Raleigh. Mm -hmm. um, so it's always a matter of usage versus uh, you know, whose vision can help you help you find the better way to do it. I could work with uh, builders and developers all day long mm -hmm. to give them an idea as a mortgage lender on what they need to do to ha to help people in that in that situation. Yeah, so, and I put people in debt for a living. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's for the betterment. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wealth management. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, you have two competitors. Yes. Uh, Charles Francis, yep. local attorney and businessman, and then uh, Nancy McFarland, yep. uh, who is the incumbent uh, seeking a fourth term. Uh, some will say is 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 rather popular. Um, Nancy's popular. Yeah. Uh, what made you wake out of wake up out of bed and say, you know what, I can win this thing? I was kicked out of bed first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was early in the morning. Get out of bed. Uh -huh. You know, go make you know, go make breakfast. Um, so I have a targeted plan in mind already on how to focus on, on, uh, uh, voters and, 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 uh, I have a certain amount of, uh, uh, expertise in focusing on numbers for what I do for a living. I do feel that Charles, uh, who is first of all, a very charismatic guy, um, and he is a savvy business guy. I actually feel like Charles is going to hurt Nancy a little bit, which also helps my numbers as well. Um, and uh, I ran for city council back in 2011. I uh, got about 18,000 votes, which was the most that any Republican candidate had ever gotten in the city race. Um, I feel that, that my message is still the better message that we need to fix our foundation, which is our debt, if, if we're gonna move forward. So in other words, what I mean by that is, uh, you can't keep focusing on the future if your president is not solid. Uh, and so I want to give us a better solid foundation before we really uh, start uh, moving forward to the future. Um, my opponents, both of them, I, I guarantee this, both of them will say, well, Raleigh has a AAA bond rating, and it's great to say that, but you know, you can have a 700 credit score and still have a lot of debt. It just means you're paying your bills on time. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're paying your debt down. Uh, since I ran for Raleigh City Council in 2011, uh, the city debt at that time was 1.4 billion, now it's $2 billion. So that's in six years, the city of Raleigh has lost $100 million a year in debt. You know, we have to find a way to fix that problem because um, Jefferson County, Alabama filed for bankruptcy, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, which is the capital of that state, filed for bankruptcy, Detroit, Michigan has filed for bankruptcy. Uh, to think that we're immune from it is, is ridiculous. We have to fix our financial uh, foundation. Mm -hmm. Paul, how can voters find out more about you uh, and, uh, and your solutions revolved around the issues of the city of Raleigh? So we're, uh, since we were late in the game, obviously we're almost, we're, our website is almost up. It will be paulfitz.com. Um, right now they can go to Facebook and look for Three for Raleigh, which is myself, Alex Moore, who's running in District A, and Rob Ward, who's running at large. Uh, 
um, or just go to my Facebook page and you know, hit me up and ask me a question. I'll answer it. I'm I'm not shy. Uh, you you know me, shy. Steve. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, you're you, not shy. You know me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very uh, good. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you for your time, Paul. We certainly do appreciate your time and coming and sharing your insight with us. Yeah. And as always, see us at yourhouse.com. <laughs>